2014 Tomcat fighter pilot in the U.S. Navy, the heroic Carrie Loren. Some of the things that I would like to share with you today are those lessons learned on my journey from a small town Midwestern girl into the cockpit of a $45 million fighter jet. In the last decade, I've worked with outstanding leaders and executives just like yourselves, helping them build high performing teams and helping take them to the next level of performance. You have to be able to feel the fear and go forward anyway. Flying is actually only part of our job. It's a small piece of our job. We're busy running squadrons that have 250 to 300 people with assets valued at right around $1 billion. So what does that look like? We go from being the maintenance officer or the safety officer or the educational services officer to very quickly taking off that hat. I go into the next room I brief my flight, my mission, then I go into another room and I crawl into 35 pounds of flight gear, go out to the flight deck, crawl up to my airplane, and I'm launched off the front end of that aircraft carrier going from zero to over 200 miles an hour in just under two seconds flat. I know it's kind of sporty, right? NASCAR, please. <laughs> but. As much as I would like to think that I have the most glamorous position on the boat being a fighter pilot, what I am keenly aware of is I cannot do this job alone. It takes an entire team to get this job done. Absolutely. Speed is life in my world, and the same is true in yours. We need to be able to make good, sound decisions very, very quickly as the competitive environment is constantly changing beneath our feet. If you lose sight, you lose the fight. So we need to stay focused on what matters. It was almost two years into this program when I really ran into the biggest barrier. They proceed to tell me that since they haven't lifted the law that bars women from flying, there's no place for me anymore in the Navy. I was gutted, gutted. The only reason I just had that conversation was that I dared to show up different. So I went back into the commanding officer's room and said, sir, I don't wanna get out of the Navy. I don't wanna to go to a non-flying job. We need to find a third way. <laughs> Y'all, that's not my lesson learned. <laughs> he said, we're gonna carve a new path for you. We're going to keep you on as a flight instructor. So I said, thank you very much. And every day I showed up as if I was going to the fleet with the rest of my classmates. It's not easy when you have these barriers put in front of you. It's not easy when people are telling you, we're not ready for you yet. We're not ready for the way you're doing business. We're not so sure about that but you stay focused on what matters. You do what you know is right, you operate with integrity, and you go forward anyway. And I stayed focused on what mattered, and that was earning those wings of gold. And it's a good thing that I did. The day my class was filling out what you wanna fly and where you want to go fly was actually the day that Congress lifted the law that banned women from flying. Now imagine if a couple of months before, on that final big boulder, that barrier to my being successful and living a dream, would have been the time that I would have said, this is now officially too hard. I don't know what I would have been doing, like chainsaw and ice sculptures in Keflavec. I have no idea. But instead, I was assigned to fly the Navy's premier fighter jet. Plain small serves nobody. And in fact, not taking a risk is actually one of the biggest risks that you can take. 